Hello everyone uh, and welcome. Welcome to another live session at the Reactors. Uh, my name is Rav and I'm the Programme Manager at Reactor London. Before we begin, please take a moment to read our Code of Conduct. Um, we're all here to learn, so please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, and please be kind and considerate in the way you engage. Um, the chat will be open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. Um, also, please note that today's session will be recorded and will be available to view on our Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel. Today is the first episode of a four-part series of Introduction to R and Machine Learning. And this episode will be led by Carlota Castelluccio and Eric. Um, Carlota is a cloud advocate at Microsoft and Eric is a data scientist and researcher at Leeds University. Um, and with that, I'm now going to hand over to Carlota and Eric, who will take over the session. Hi, Carlota. Hi, Eric. Hi, hi, everyone. Thanks, thanks, Rob, for this great introduction. And welcome to everyone to this new series designed to uh, getting started with R for data science. So I'm Carota Castelluccio, Cloud Advocate at Microsoft, focused on data science and data analytics. And today I'm happy to be here with my friend Eric. Uh, so how are you, Eric? Uh, do you mind to introduce briefly yourself? No worries, Carlota. Thanks so much for having me and uh, such a pleasure to be here. So my name is Eric. I am a data scientist slash, slash researcher at the University of Leeds. So really happy to be here and uh, let's kick this off, Carlotta. Great, thank you. Um, yes, so we have a few learning objectives on our agenda today, right? Um, uh, we are going to describe the main concept about data exploration and analysis for data scientists. We are going to look into how to use some common R packages like Digiplot2 and DPR to understand our data and how to extract useful insights from, from our data. And finally, we are going to apply this concept on a real world data set and real world use case uh, through an hands on workshop. So um, let's get started. Um, so I would like to just introduce a little bit um, the, this, this episode and, and the R language. Um, so as also the name suggests, the role of a data scientist primarily involves exploring and analyzing data. And the result of an analysis might form the basis of a report or a machine learning model, but it all begins with data. And today we are talking about R, since it's one of the most popular programming languages for data scientists. Uh, R provides extensive functionality with a massive set of powerful statistical modeling, machine learning, visualization, and data ranking packages. Uh, for instance, we can mention Tidyverse, which is a collection of R packages that make data science faster and easier. Tidy Models, which is a collection of our packages for modeling and statistical analysis. TensorFlow for R and Torch for R, uh, supplying machine learning and deep learning capabilities. So now that we have set our landing objectives for today and we have done a brief introduction, uh, I would like to let you, Eric, uh, to tell us more about what exploratory data analysis is and how we can do it in R. All right, Carlotta, thanks uh, for that. Uh great introduction about R and it's an and it's a ecosystem of packages. So yeah, let's talk about exporting data analysis, a step that comes after importing data into your environment and tidying it. So exploit data analysis is this iterative cycle of analyzing data to summarize its main characteristics, often by visualizing and transforming it. So more often than not, uh, exploit data analysis involves uh, formulating some probing questions about your data searching for answers by visualizing and transforming data, and finally, uh, using the understanding that you've gained to refine your questions, drop the questions entirely, and or generate new questions. So this continues until you home in on a few particular productive areas that you eventually write up and communicate to others. So with that said, let's, come, uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the components of exported data analysis. And the first one is visualizing data. So there's this white saying that, that goes like this, that the simple graph has brought more information to the data analyst's mind than any other device. This is a quote by John Tucky, um, further in our exploited data analysis. So data, data visualization typically involves 
taking the data stored in tables or data frames and transforming it into elegant and informative plots that help you understand your data. So to understand the power of data visualization, let's consider the data below, which shows the location x, y of a self-driving car with time. So in its raw form, it's really hard to see any real patterns. But by plotting the location x over time, we can see that the vehicle moved over negative 2 and 2 on the x-axis. And if you also plot the location x over time, you can see that we appear to have some missing values between 7 and 12 uh, units of time. So a good visualization will show you that things that you did not expect or raise new questions about the data entirely. So for example, if we graph X versus Y, we end up with a map of where the car has driven. And then it's instantly obvious that the car has been driving in a circle, but at some point drove to the center of the circle. So these are really um, some of the uh, highlights of why data visualization is important to a data scientist and to the whole process of of data science, you know, from importing data all the way to communicating it. But um, as, you might, as you might have heard earlier, ex uh, exploit data analysis also involves data transformation. So let's, so let's talk a little about data, uh, I mean, about data visualization, uh, how do we do it in R? So R has several packages for making graphs, but ggplot2 is one of the most elegant and versatile so ggplot2 is an R package that allows you to create elegant graphics for data analysis. So ggplot2 does this by providing you a grammar uh, for creating graphs that combines multiple independent graphics in a series of iterative steps. So this makes ggplot2 one of the most versatile and powerful tools for making graphs in R. Like in the, in the, in the, in the slide shown here, we can be able to make multiple, multiple graphs of different types with different colors with different uh, backgrounds and also add up to, um, you know, images in our graphs. So th this really makes, uh, you know, ggplot2 uh, very versatile and allows you to make any type of graphs from very static graphs to interactive graphs all the way to generative art. So, and in this, in this tutorial, we'll be showing some of the ways to help you get started with ggplot2. So moving on ahead, we, um, we, 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 in the exploit data analysis so cycle, we realize that visualization alone is typically not enough. And sometimes we need to transform data. So data transformation typically involves narrowing on observations of interest, such as the you know, rows that satisfy your conditions or creating new variables that are functions of existing variables. For instance, calculating speed given distance over time or even calculating a summary, a set of summary statistics, such as the counts of the means. So in R, we do this using the deplier package. And a deplier is really a grammar of data manipulation that provides you with these consistent and intuitive verbs that helps you solve the most common data manipulation challenges. And some of these verbs, you'll be using them um, in, a, in a challenge later on, and you'll be able to, so, and we'll be able to show why um, you know, the intuitiveness and the ease of these verbs to help you solve some of these data, data science challenges. So Kalota, with that said, um, I give it over back to you. What do you have next? Yeah, so thank you. Uh, thanks, Eric, for this great explanation about data exploration and visualization in R. Um, unfortunately, it's now time to deal with reality, right? Uh, what I mean is that uh, data presented in educational material is often remarkably perfect students how to find clear relationships between variables. Uh, while real-world data is a bit less simple than that, uh, it can contain min many different issues that can affect the utility of the data and our interpretation of the results. Um, for example, real-world data can be affected by a bad recording or a bad measurement, and it can also contain missing values for some parameters. Uh, in other situations, some data points can be clearly outside what is expected, also known as outliers. And here it's important to evaluate if outliers can be safely removed from analysis or if we are removing data points that provide real insights. Uh, in addition to this, it's important to realize that most real-world data are influenced by factors that weren't recorded at the time. Uh, for example, we might have a table of race car truck times alongside engine sizes, but various other factors that weren't written down, such as the weather, probably also played a role. Uh, if problematic, the influence of these factors can often be reduced by increasing the size of the data set. 
Another common issue in world data is bias. Bias refers to a human tendency to select certain types of values more frequently than others in a way that misrepresents the underlying population or the real world. Bias can sometimes be identified by exploring data while keeping in mind basic knowledge about um, where the data come from. Uh, so by listing all the complexity of real world data, we don't want to discourage you. Uh, on the contrary, we would like to give you the means to face these summonable issues. And for doing so, we have for you a real life challenge. Um, so remember that best practice is to inspect the raw data and process it before use, which reduces errors or issues, typically by removing erroneous data points or modifying the data into a more useful form. Uh, for this challenge, let's imagine that the Department of Transportation is considering the addition of a new airport. And as the amazing data scientist that you are, you have been requested to explore existing data. In this challenge, we'll explore together a real-world data set containing flights data from the U.S. Department of Transportation. Um, so, Eric, it's time to take the challenge, right? Uh, what do we need to start? Yes, yes, Carlotta, perfect. Yeah, time to time to uh, take up the challenge. So, um, so what 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 we require in this um, you know in in this challenge dot book is uh, an environment where we have created a ready environment where we have created both in Binder and in uh, Docker or VS Code that you can access. So, um, so in this, uh, you just have to you know uh, log in. I mean, click on the Binder link that will take you to a Jupyter notebook where you can uh, run the code alongside with us. Or if you have a uh, Docker or uh, code spaces, you also create a ready environment there with all the packages installed that you can just you know come in and uh, you know get started and follow along and the adventure. So uh, Carlotta, now it's time for me to, to go to the challenge, right? And uh, Let's see how we can help the Department of Transportation in planning uh, for, 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 for the next airport. So, yes. Um, yeah, exactly. So uh, do you mind sharing your screen, Eric? And in the meantime, so I wanted to remember that in the chat, you can find uh, both the GitHub repo link. So the, the link to the GitHub repo where you can find all the material we are using today. Uh, so the PowerPoint, as well as the notebook, uh, and uh, also the binder environment that you can use to um, also execute the notebook uh, by leveraging on the data science virtual machine we've provided for you. Um, so, Eric, over to you. Perfect, Carlotta. Thanks so much. Uh, will you confirm if my screen is visible? Yeah, it is. Perfect, perfect. So yes, uh, let's get started with uh, with this challenge. So for those of you who, um, who may not be familiar with this, this is a Jupyter Notebook. It's a notebook similar to R Markdown or Quarto that you may be familiar with. So a uh, Jupyter Notebook, just like other notebooks, allows you to combine the pros, you know, uh, what you are thinking when you are analyzing data, the code that you used, and most importantly, the results that you obtain. So this is a really good communication and um, you know communication and 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 I mean communicative tool that helps you not only to you know put everything together nicely, but also reproduce it in the future or you know for other for other stakeholders who may be involved in your project. So with that said, let's begin by. Um, uh, exploring and analyzing this data. So we'll begin by rolling in the required packages. And in R, we do this using the library, the library function. So we'll load in a couple of packages here. So some some Carlotta has mentioned, so, such as the tidyverse, you know, uh, a collection of R packages for exploited data analysis. Uh, we have summary tools, that's a good package for doing summary statistics. Library glue, that allows you to um, print things nicely together and patchwork that allows you to combine many plots under, under one pane. So by running this code chunk, we are able to load the packages into our environment. So once the packages are in our environment, we can then import the data and start doing some data science on it. So how do you import data in R? So uh, we have this, because the data is in a CSV format, flies.csv, we're reading the data using the read CSV command 
And then we'll display the first seven rows of the data using the function slice head. So let's do that just now. We're loading the data and then we view the first seven rows of the data. And that gives us this good, nice table with the first seven rows and the, all the columns, which are 20. So Carlotta, this seems a little intimidating at first. Would you mind uh, explaining or getting us through uh, what this data really represents? Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, so as you can see, this data set contains 20 columns. So the first four columns provide us with information about the date of the flight, uh, the year, the month, the day of the month, and the day of the week. And both month and day of the week values are not strings, but numbers going from one to 12 for months and for one to seven for day of the week. Uh, while the career is um, the value, the acronym of the airline company. Um, and the following columns contain information about the departure and destination airport. So the unique ID of the airport, the name, the city and the state. All the other columns are related to scheduled departure and arrival times and possible delays. In particular, we have uh, CSR debt time and CSR R time, which are respectively scheduled departure time and scheduled departure arrival time. Then we have debt delay and R delay values, which are the numbers of minutes that the flight departure or arrival was delayed. And in case of negative values, the flight departed or arrived in advance. Debt delay 15 and R delay 15 are two binary columns that tell us the information if the flight departure and or the flight arrival were delayed of 15 minutes, which is the time after which a flight is considered a late flight. And the last column uh, considered, as the name suggests, is another binary indicator whether the flight was concealed or not. So um, given this, um, th this is our data set we are going to work with today. And this workshop, this challenge is structured in 11 questions that will guide us from data cleaning, so missing values and outliers removal, to data exploration and to finally extract useful insights from our data. Um, so for, for each question, you will see you have a few lines of codes to complete by filling out blank spaces. And we will go through the code together and analyze the correct answer or maybe sometimes correct answers, if more than one. Uh, so please feel free to interact with us through the chat in every moment if you want to guess the possible answer or if you want to ask for clarification. But first of all, uh, we would like to provide you with a small tip. So as you may have noticed, when a data frame contains quite a few columns, it could be a little bit tricky to get a grip on the data at the first sight. So the function glimpse glee can help us in this by producing a transposed version of our table in a way that it's easier to visualize every column in a data frame as Eric is shown, um, is shown us right now. Uh, so now let's move to data cleaning. Uh, this is a very important and often under, underestimated step of data analysis. And the first thing we need to know is whether there are any missing values in our data set. Uh, by using the function is.na, where na stands for not available value. Um, so with this simple line of code that Eric just ran, uh, we can easily notice that the only column in which we have missing values in this data set is depth of 15, and we also have quite a lot of them. Um, so the first question will uh, will deal with um, uh, these NA values, right? So starting from our data set, um, we need uh, question one asks us to select the column depth delay and depth of 15 um, and filter in order to obtain rows where depth of 15 is NA. But be before going into the details of the code and answering to the first question, uh, Eric, I would like to ask you, can you briefly explain us what the operators we can see in this piece of code do in R. So what's pipe operator, what's the select operator, what's the filter operator? Perfect, perfect, Carlotta. Thanks Thanks for that good uh, introduction of the data and the question itself. So yeah, um, let's, let's, let's start at the beginning. So we have this, um, this operator here. So in R, this is known as the assignment operator. So what the assignment operator does is that it takes uh, you know, the results of a uh, computation and assigns it to a uh, variable name, for instance. Uh, this All this operation will be, will be assigned to a variable name known as flight step delay. So, um, and then this uh, operator here is known as the pipe operator. 
So the pipe operator, it allows you to take uh, to take some data on the left and to pass it to a function on the right. So the pipe operator um, really provides is this really um, intuitive way of taking data and passing through it a series of trans transformations step by step. So in R, we read this as and then. So for instance, here, we'll be taking the flight data and then we'll be selecting and then we'll be filtering. So that said, let's let's uh, let's 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 go to the definition of this verb select and filter. So select and filter are verbs from the deployer package, the, um, and, and they are and they are meant to do different things. So select uh, from the name, as the name suggests, allows you to pick a particular column. In our case, we've been told to select column step delay and step delay fifteen, and filter is another verb in deployer that allows you to obtain rows that satisfy you some given conditions. So for instance, we have been told here, filter for rows that contain a missing value in depth delay 15. So these are the intuitive and uh, grammar of, of, of data manipulation that Deployer provides and allows you to do data, data science in much easier and fun ways. So Kawata, how uh, do you think that is enough? Do, do you have any more questions on that? No, I think it's perfect. So I think we can go ahead and just answer to our first question, right? Yes, yes, yes. Let's uh let's get right into it, Kalota. So I'll, you know, as as you ask, Kalota, we uh the question one a lot wanted us to you know to obtain rows where we have a missing value in the departure delay 15. So how do we approach this? So starting from the flights data, which is the flights. So what do you want to do? So start the flights data. And then we want to select some particular columns. And these columns are uh, depth delay and um, depth del 15. So depth del 15. So that's one part of the question that is done. You've selected columns depth, del, depth delay and depth delay 15. And then we want to filter for rows where there is a missing value, is.na in uh, depth del 15. So we want to investigate those uh, around 2000 values so, so that were missing in the depth delay 15 column. So, so filter for rows where there's a missing value in depth del 15. And then we have assigned all this operation to a variable name flights depth del. And we can see that uh, if we run the code later, so yeah, let's let's see the result of this. So once we run this, um, yes, we can. Uh, we have been able to select depth delay and depth delay fifteen, and then filter the data set to obtain to, uh, the rows where we have a missing value in uh, depth del fifteen. So um, yeah, let's clear this output. And the good thing is that this. This notebook, uh, if maybe running it already, we have a code chunk uh, that is powered by this auto grader solution known as Otter. So Otter allows you to check whether you are, your answers are correct uh, or whether they may not be correct, and provides you with this good, uh, you know, feedback of where you might have gone wrong. So um, let's see whether we have uh, done it correctly. And yes. We have successfully selected departure delay and departure delay 15 columns and filtered where we have a missing value. So um, again, as Carlotta gave us the tip, we can glimpse onto our data to, to bring it in a more transposed way. So yes. So with, uh, with the output of the glimpse function, we have some few variables that are, I mean, I think probably the first 10 or 15 variables that have been displayed. And uh, it's really interesting here, you know, because uh, for in, 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 in these two columns, the departure delay is zero. So that meaning the flight was delayed by zero minutes and yet uh, the departure delay 15 is missing value. So um, Kawata, what do you think about this? Uh, what, that, what, what does this tell us? What, what do you think this tells us, Kawata? Yeah, yeah. So I think this is an interesting result because um, so we defined that delay as the value of minutes um, of delay of a departure of a flight. Uh, so if we have zero minute of delay, that means that the flight was not delayed at all, right? 
So the weather indicator, if the flight is a late flight or not, should be um, zero as well. Um, at least for the values we are we are seeing over there, so for the past 10 or 15, uh, 15 values. Um, but probably we need to double check also all the other missing values of the of the data set, right? Yeah, perfect. Yes, yes. Well said, Kawata. Yeah. So this for, for the first for the first few uh, you know uh, observations, you can see that the pi delay is zero, as the pi delay fifteen, uh, which is a binary indicator, is missing. So let's see if this is common to all the uh, to all the variables. So we can do that by taking. Um, you know, this table that you made up here called fly step del, and then selecting the column departure delay, and then passing it to a function called summary that, that gives you summary statistics such as the mean, the median, um, you know, the, the, the first quartile, the maximum value. So what this tells us is, uh, you know, for all for all values of departure delay 15, which is a binary indicator indicating whether a flight was delayed more than, um, you know, one minute, uh, I mean, more than 15 minutes, the corresponding departure delay minutes were actually zero. So, yeah, so this gives us a hint that, you know, the, uh, probably the departure del 15 values which are missing should be probably imputed with a zero because the corresponding uh, missing values of minutes are zero. But anyhow, let's see how we, we deal with that. So, Kawata, I'm giving it back to you. What do you think we're going to do next? Yeah, so uh, th this result you just explained really uh, lead us to question two, because as we discovered that the missing values for depth of 15 are actually zero since the flights are not real late flights, uh, question two asks us to impute the missing values uh, by replacing them with the zeros. Um, but before going to the answer of question two, um, I see a new verb in this piece of code, Eric, mutate. Um, so you, you mentioned it before in the introductory decks, but can you explain more about what mutate does in R? Aha, uh -huh. yes, yes, Kawata, that's a good question, yeah. So, um, so mutate, what mutate allows you to do, uh, allows you to take an, take an existing data frame and then modify a given column or add a new column entirely. So that, that, that's really the basic function of mutating, uh, of mutate verb, uh, allows you to modify an existing column or um, add a new column entirely. So in this, for instance, in this question, you're being told, you know, take the, take, take, take the flight data, and then for this column known as departure delay 15, uh, modify the values that were missing and you know, uh, replace them with a zero. So what's, that's what uh, mutate mutate does uh, at its core. So um, Kalota, I'm giving this back to you. Uh, do you have any, any idea of how we could do this? Uh, yeah, so Eric, you know, I was wondering, uh, could be um, so simple as just putting a zero in this uh, blank space we see over there? Over there? Oh. Okay, yeah, I see, I see, I see color. Um, so um, that question, I mean, that answer, uh, it's uh, it's correct. It will partly solve the answer and partly uh, gives us more problems. So, for instance, why why do I say it? Because uh, if we take uh, departure delay fifteen and assign every every value in that column to a zero, that means that we will replace even the values that that were not NA that are not missing with a zero. So yeah, that would unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, not only replace the missing values with a zero, but also the other values that were not missing with a zero. So but uh, a better way to do this, Kalata, would be to use a verb known as replace NA. So how do you go about this? So again, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll We'll start with, with what makes our really readable code. So we start with the flight data, and then we'll mutate the departure delay 15 column. And how do you want it, how do you want uh, that column to be? We want to replace um, the missing values um, in departure delay 15 column with a zero. 
So what this will do, we have taken the flight data and then we have modified the departure delay column, SATA. We've replaced the missing values in departure delay with a zero, and this is done easily using the replace and if replace and a verb. So what this does is that uh, it will only uh, you know um, mutate or modify the ro the the rows uh, that had a missing value. So we can run this, and uh, again uh, we can check whether our answers are correct by learning uh, this uh, code chunk. Uh, and yes, Carla, this is uh, the, the, the most correct answer that where we have replaced the missing value in departure delay um, 15 column. So Carlotta, that's, uh, that's how we'll solve it. I don't know if you have any more questions on your end. No, perfect, perfect, thank you. Um, I, would I would like to move to the, to the next milestone then. So let's move to outliers, right? Uh, I remember you talked about outliers before um, in the in the introductory decks, um, but let's let's just recap a little bit what an outlier is. So an outlier is a data point that significantly differs from the other observations, and it's important to carefully evaluate if these outliers can heavily unbalance the summary statistics of the data set and if you can safely remove them. Uh, and the easiest way to spot outliers is to graph the distribution of the data. Uh, that's why in the next question, uh, we are going to use a function we named show distribution, which shows the distribution and summary statistics of the data set for a given column. So the column we want to pass to this function is that delay. So the number of minutes of delay of the departure of a flight. Um, so before going to, to the next question, Eric, do you mind to briefly explain us what the function show underscore distribution does? Sure, sure, no worries, Carlotta. So the function show distribution, what it does, it takes a column as the data and a parameter known as bin that's used to plot a, a histogram. So what it does after it takes in that particular column, it, it calculates the summary statistics for that column, such as the mean, the maximum value, the average value, the median, and the uh, mode. So once it does that, it uses the, the, the package glue to print this all very nicely. And then it plots two types of plots. Uh, or one plot is, uh, that it plots is a, is a histogram. And we'll discuss this more in details. But for now, uh, it takes that, that given column and plots a histogram. And then it also takes that given column and plots a box plot. And once it does this, uh, it returns to you the summary statistics and the two uh, plots nicely together. So uh, yes, yeah, so that's what this show distribution function does. And we'll see it uh, to the test in our next question. So Carlotta, do you mind taking us to this, uh, this question that will allow us to utilize the, the function uh, uh, show distribution? Sure, sure. So question three asks us, starting from our data set, to only keep the depth delay column, um, assign is to a variable, uh, and then pass this column to our function we just uh, described, so the show distribution function. Um, in our piece of code answering the question three, we can already see the call to the function, the show distribution function, so we should focus probably to answer to this question to the first part. Um, extracting, keeping the depth delay column from the data set. Uh, so Eric, can we give some hints about how to solve uh, this, this third question? Yes, yes, sure, 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 Colin, no worries. Um, and, you know, uh, you know be, being the good um, uh, partner that I am in this, uh, I'll, I'll kind of draw this back to you, Colin, and we can discuss it and run this through with you. So we have we have done a number of verbs now, you know, such as select and filter and mutate. So um, what do you think uh, is the verb that will allow us to keep uh, the departure delay call out that which will then pass in the show distribution function? Yeah, thanks for asking. So um, I will definitely uh, starting with uh, exclude the mutate uh, verb. I mean, uh, the, the good thing of R is that it's, uh, its syntax is very, it's, is very intuitive. 
so to extract some values, some data from our data set, we, we probably need to use either select or filter. Uh, so um, if I remember well, uh, we, we used uh, before filter um, in order to extract some rows from the data set, a set of rows um, um, respecting a certain condition, right? So filter has um, uh, want, uh, wants as input parameter a condition that the rows should respect, the rows we want to extract from the data set. Uh, and this is not our, our case, right? Because in this case, we want to keep to extract a column, the, the hook column from the data set. Um, that's why I would definitely go with select. What do you think? Am I right? Uh -huh. So I, I would I, I would also go with select. Uh, yeah. So um, you know what, Halota? You just hold that thought. We'll put select, and then we'll test our answer to see if that's the correct answer. All right. So OK. So let's. Uh, Let's let's go with uh, the select verb. So we want to keep this uh, column depth delay. So we start with the flight data, and then select. Uh, sorry, and then select the column departure the delay, which are the number of minutes that a, uh, a flight was delayed with. So if we run this. Perfect. So if we run this, uh, we can already see the function. I mean, the the function outputs. And starting with the summary statistics, uh, we can see that uh, the, you know, for for this column, we have uh, the minimum flight that the minimum number of minutes that a flight was delayed was negative sixty three. So meaning that um, the actually the the flight came in, uh, you know, or a light, um, you know, went out, went away earlier than, than expected, yeah, because that's the negative number. So, but the mean number of delay minutes were mean uh, around 10, 10 minutes, the median was negative one, the mode was negative three, and the maximum delay time was 114 and 1,425 minutes. That's a lot of minutes. This could be an outlier, but uh, let's hold that thought. So we can plot the distribution and um, this, uh, the next part were, of the function was was returning a histogram and uh, and um, and a box plot. So from the histogram, we can see the most uh, allows us to see the most uh, frequent beans of values. So we can we can see that uh, we have many values falling around uh, you know zero minutes. So which is um, you know which you can get from the summary statistics. So where the mean, the, the median, the mode are around all around zero. So um, this is how the, the, the row form uh, of the histogram looks like with more values being centered around zero. But um, what allows us to detect outliers is the, is the box plot down below. And you can see uh, we have a lot of outliers given by the small dots, uh, you know, uh to the right and to the left of the uh of, of the zero of the zero minutes so this is what um really allows us to see that wow we have a lot of outliers in our data and in the next subsequent set of questions you're going to deal with such values so but um given that you have run the function and you've gotten some of the summary statistics and summary plots we can now check our answer to see whether really select the select verb and what you've seen is correct. So once again, let's run that particular piece of code. And yes, uh, Kawata, you are right. The the the, the, um, the correct verb of select, and you have successfully also displayed some of the summary statistics of the departure delayed column. So Kawata, now over to you. Uh, how are we doing next? Uh, what challenge are you going to do next from this? Yeah, so good job so far. Um, moving to question four, we want to apply the same function we just we just explained, so the show, the show distribution function, to our R delay um, column. So the column of uh, the value of the number of minutes of delay of arrival of a flight, um, because we want to explore the distribution of the of the values also for 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 this column. 
And since we just did it for the delay column, now it should be much easier to fill the missing space in this in this answer, right, Eric? Yes, yes, you're totally right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we can go ahead and do the same. So, for instance, um, the the previous column was we wanted to see the distribution of the arrival delay, but here I want to see the distribution of the. I mean, of the the, the previous one we saw the distribution of the um departure delay but for here i want to see the distribution of the arrival delay so let's begin by selecting that particular column arrival delay so we take the flight data and then the verb we saw correct verb was the select verb so let's select the arrival um the arrival delay column sorry the arrival delay column and then once you've selected it we'll pass it to a variable name, name known as df call after that, we'll pass the, the DF call uh, variable name to the show distribution data. So let's see, to the show distribution function. So let's see whether um, these two uh, columns have uh, the same distribution and got an error. And what the error telling us, could not find function select. This is a really good thing about uh, R because even the errors itself, they point to the right direction. So the error here was me putting double C in select. That's a typo there, but um, let's run this again. And yep, uh, seems the summary statistic and distribution of uh, of these two columns not really different. So for the arrival delay, we have the minimum arrival delay of uh, negative seventy five. That means that that meaning that the flight arrived earlier than expected by seventy five minutes. It's a good thing. I uh, have a mean arrival delay of six minutes, a median of negative three, a mode of zero, and a maximum of uh, 1440 minutes. So again, with uh, when you plot the histograms and the box plot, uh, we can see that they really have also a similarity with, with the previous uh, departure delay. We have a lot of values um, uh, most frequently being around zero, the zero value and uh, also having a lot of outliers uh, as indicated in our box in our box plot below, such as, you know, in the one of departure delay. So, um, yeah, this gives us, uh, you know, a hint that, you know, these two columns really have a lot of outliers and you have to solve uh, or deal with them before we can continue our data analysis. So again, we can run the code chunk to check whether our answers were correct and, uh, Yes, again, uh, we're able to successfully select the arrival delay column and pass it to the show distribution um, function that showed us the summary statistics. So, um, yeah, so as again, as I mentioned earlier, from the both output, you see we have outliers both uh, at the, you know, at both ends, you know, below zero and uh, and 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 after zero. So, Carlotta, what 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 uh, what do you think? We would be a good way to solve or to remove some of these outliers. Yeah, so we spotted outliers for, for both columns. And now, um, like um, an approach to safely remove outliers is to trim data in a way that values for uh, our columns R delay and depth delay are within the first and 19th percentile where the first percentile indicates the value below which 1% uh, of the data in the data set is found, uh, while the 90th percentile indicates the value below which the 90% of the data in the data set is found. Um, yeah, so let's begin with our, with our delay and let's do the job for this column, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, Carlotta. Uh, thanks, thank, thank you for the uh, great tip on how to deal with outliers and what the uh, values of the what the meaning of the of the first and 90th percentile so um so as Carlotta said we will trim the data for values that fall within the first and 90th percentile of the data so how do you do this in r so again um we start with the flight data and then we will pull the values of arrival delay so um Person may ask, what, what, what is the verb? What does the verb pool does? So the verb, what the verb pool does is that it extracts the values in a particular column into a vector of values. Uh, this is very different from select because select, select gives you the complete uh, column as a data frame, but pool allows you now to take those values in that, um, in that particular column and put them nicely in a vector. 
So we take this flight data, we pull the, the values, I mean, we extract the values of the arrival delay column, and then we pass them to the quantile function and we, uh, uh, we, we get the, the, the value that corresponds to where 1% of the data would fall to, that's, that's the first, that's the first uh, percentile. So again, we do the rest, we, we do that again for the 90th percentile, we take the flight data, we extract the values of the arrival delay column, and then we find uh, uh, the 90th percentile of, of, of that change of values. So this is how we were, um, would find the first and 90th percentile in the arrival delay column. So once we run this, we can find that uh, the first percentile corresponds to negative 33, and the 90th percentile corresponds to 38. And now using these values, we can confidently go ahead and answer our next question, which, which mainly deals with uh, how to deal with the outliers in the arrival delay column. So um, Kalota, over to you. Uh, or, or, or what do you have in store next? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Eric, for showing us how to calculate the first and 90th percentile for the air delay column. Um, as you mentioned, now we want to use these values in order to filter out all the values lower than the first percentile and greater than the 90th percentile. Um, so this is what uh, actually question five is asking to us. Um, we, in the, in the piece of code for the answer to question five, we, we can see uh, again our uh, filter verb, right? We, we already found it in, a, in other questions. So now we, um, uh, we know how to use it. Um, yeah, so um, Eric, do you have some hints on how to solve this question five? Yes, yes, Scott. Uh, um... We, yes, we, we, we may have some hints on how to solve this. So um, if, if, if you noticed, um, the, the previous uh, filters were only, you know, uh, you know, filtering for rules that satisfy one condition of the data. But what um, does this question want us to do? It wants us to include rules uh, for variables that fall within the first and 90th percentile. So you have to filter for two conditions. And one condition is that the, um, you know, the, 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 the observations in that particular column are greater than, you know, a particular value and also less than a particular value. So yeah, Carlotta, that, 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 that would be the hint that I would provide. Uh, you know, the hint that I've provided Carlotta, would do, do try and guess what we should put in in this filter, uh, you know, blank spaces of this question? Um, yeah, sure. So we, we computed our first and 90th percentile, right? And we, we assigned these values to, to new variables. So um, probably we should we should use these, ver these variables we just defined, right? Because we, we, we need to trim the data set, um, we, to trim the data, um, using the first and the 90th percentile. So to trim all the values lower than the first percentile and filter all the value greater than the 90th percentile. Yes, yes, Carlotta, very right, very correct. So um, yeah, so that's exactly what you said. So let's go ahead and, and use the values negative that trim that we used, that we obtained to trim this data. Um, so um, again, let's start with the flight data and then filter uh, the rows where the arrival delay is greater than the first percentile. So uh, just uh, being very hardworking, I'll just take this and copy this here. So we've, we've uh, you know, we've, we've uh, got one condition right, you know, filter for uh, observation the arrival delay is greater than the first percentile. And we want also to filter for the condition where the arrival delay is uh, less than the 90th percentile, which we uh, named as this variable name here. So yes, this will be the condition that allows us to filter the data such as all such that are uh, all the resulting data such as our resulting data flame would be um, would have variables 
that fall within the first and uh, 90th percentile. So um, we can run this. And uh, yes, so we get this nicely um, trimmed uh, data set where the values uh, of the arrival delay column are within the first and 90th percentile. So uh, can clear the cell output and we can check whether our answer again is correct uh, by running this code chunk. And um, yes, we have successfully uh, included observations whose arrival delay falls within the first and 90th percentile. So with that done, Kawata, do you have any more questions? Um, you know, with, uh, with this question, I'll do proceed to the next. Um, I will definitely go to the to the next one, but if um, I mean if um, anyone has any questions, please uh, feel free to put, put put the questions in the chat. If you have doubts um, of what we've done so far about the the grammar, the verbs we just introduced, so feel free to um, to put your question in the chat. Um, so uh, for our question six. Uh, um, um, so first of all, thanks Eric for showing us how to trim the data to obtain only rows whose R delay values is within the first and 90th percentile. Uh, but since we observed a similar data distribution for the depth delay column uh, with a few outliers in the box plot, uh, now it's time to do the same job for the depth delay column. Um, but since we already did the job for R delay, um, it shouldn't be so hard, right Eric? Yes, yes, Kalata. As you said, yeah, it, uh, we are basically following the same convention that we used here, uh, and then doing the same for the uh, departure delay column. So yes, it should not be uh, as hard as uh, as possible. It should be as easy as possible. I mean, so um, yeah. So we would invite you to, uh, of course, uh, code along with us uh, if you have the notebook open. Um, yeah, and uh, let's let's uh, let's do the same data transformation we did in obtaining the first and ninth percentile in our um, uh, in our departure delay column. So again, uh, if you want to look for inspiration, yeah, it's uh, what we did above here. So let's uh, let's let's go ahead and do the same here. So we we'll start with the flies data. This time, um, we want to uh, extract the values in uh, the in this column known as departure delay, the number of minutes uh, a flight was delayed, and then we want to um, find the you know the, the first the first percent the first quantile of the data. So uh, to do this, we use the quant quantiles function. Quantile function takes in a probability, uh, that's one over 100. And then for easier printing, we're saying that uh, this is just a print parameter. We just say names is equal to false. Uh, and please, you can play around with it in your own, in your own free time. Just put names is equal to true, see what happens. And um, yeah, so uh, we that's, that's how we do the first percentile departure delay uh, column, we can again take what we've just done here and uh, and yep, uh, calculate the 90th percentile of the data so that we've taken the flies data and then we have extracted the values of departure delay uh, column and then pass them to the function called quantiles and now we want the 90th percentile. So once you've done that, we can then print out these values nicely using the function called cut uh, separated by a new line. So um, let's run this. And um, oh, we're getting the error, crotified function quantiles. So I think the function was quantile. Uh, yes, the verb, I mean, the verb was quantile, not quantiles. Sorry about that. Um, so again, uh, yes. That's how uh, that's how easy it is to 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 find errors in your data and recorrect them uh, because uh, as you said, R is as intuitive as they come. So the departure delay um, uh, 
faster than 90th percentile are really similar to, to, to the previous ones, whereby the first percentile is at negative 12 and the 90th is at 17. So uh, let's uh, check whether we got it right. And uh, yes, we, we, we are the first step of also dealing with outliers for the for the departure delay column, and we got uh, the first and ninetieth percentiles correctly. So yeah, Kawata, um, uh, that 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 that's it for me. Do do, do you think how are we going next with this uh, after finding this 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 percentile values? Yeah. So as you just said, we got the first uh, the first step right for dealing with um, outliers also. For, for this column, for the depth delay column. Um, we, we computed the first 90 percentile. So now what we should do next with next question uh, is trim the data using these values. So filtering values um, lower than the first percentile and uh, values greater than the 90 percentile. Uh, so th this is really what question seven is asking us to do. And we can take inspiration from what we just did for the R delay column, right? Yes, yes, Carlotta, very right. Um, so yes, so um, if there's anyone in the audience running it, uh, along, uh, alongside along us, you would, uh, you know, if, if you don't remember the verb that we used, here what you want to do is we want to filter for uh, flights that include draws that fall within the first and uh, 90th percent of departure delay column. So the verb here again will be similar to what you used earlier, and that is the filter verb. So let's um, let's 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 go ahead and see this in action uh, again. So um, again, we'll uh, read through the code. Uh, this it's one of the strengths of R allows you to read through the code. So uh, we start with the flights data, and then we want to filter. Um, or for rows that satisfy some given condition. What are these given conditions? That the departure delay, the values of departure delay fall within the first and the first quantile and in the 90th, uh, you know, uh, uh, quantiles. So filter for uh, values where the departure delay um, is greater than the Past percentile, what did you name it? You named it at depth delay, 01 percentile. So we will put that uh, there. And so let's use another operator. You know, for those for those um, um, familiar with other languages, you know, such as Python or C or C or MATLAB, we, we know of the AND operator, which is also present in R. Uh, so uh, this is very similar to what uh, we used above here, the comma, it will do the same thing. So, but uh, this is more readable for, for folks coming from other languages. So last, again, we are taking the flight data filter for uh, values that uh, are greater than the first percentile and um, values of depth delay that are uh, lower than the 90th percentile. So this will be 90th percentile. So yeah, so this is another way of filtering. This is another way of using the filter verb with a different operator. So, um, and of course you can, you can run the results. You can check um, the results manually. Uh, so let's uh, run this and yes. So we get a clean data frame, nice table, that has uh, where, where there, uh, where the you know the values of departure delay are within the first and ninetieth percentile. So that's how we've dealt with outliers in the in the, in, in, in this um, in these two columns. And again, we can check our our our, our quest our, our answers to see where they are they they are correct. And uh, yep, we we are on the right track. So, um, Carlotta, now that we have uh, our class removed, it would be really nice to show the distribution again, right? Yeah, yeah, it could be very helpful to see the to see the distribution now and how our data set has changed with this 
um, with yeah this uh, this the, the code we just run. Yes, yes, got it. So let's go ahead and do just that. So we use the show distribution, uh, you know, uh, function that we created, and which takes a, a, a column as the input, and to and to take a column use the select verb. So we select the departure delay column, then we set the bin width is equal to two. So the bin width parameter is a parameter that you can really play with uh, to see one that uh, really um, represents your data well. So for the departure delay, when outliers are removed, um, we can see that the minimum time that a flight was delayed was, was 11 minutes, um, was negative 11. So that means the flight, um, you know, it, it, uh, it went earlier by 11 minutes. Uh, the maximum was 16 minutes. So the flight got actually delayed by 16 minutes. And um, yeah, our distribution now is, is really more uh, visually uh, perceivable. And you can see uh, for those um, uh, who are familiar with, with some statistics, you can see that it follows a bell curve. And the bell curve, uh, what, what shows us that most uh, of the data lies within the middle of the data. I mean, that lies within uh, the middle statistic, the middle statistic value of our data, such as uh, the mean, the median, and the mode, which uh, you know, which is a pretty good thing, uh, since our results seem to be very skewed to the right or to the left. Uh, once we are doing more more data intensive uh, uh, processes, such as such as building models. So again, um, in our box plot, we are, we are able to see the same representation from the histogram, but now um, we can, it's, it's on a planar view and we can see that we have very few outliers here. And the box plot now really allows us to see the minimum value, um, the median value given here, the maximum value, and uh, the two edges give us the 25th and 75th uh, percentile of our data. So these are really, uh, um, you know, uh, good looking and uh, more, more, more better suited uh, data set for, you know, for, for doing exported data analysis. And let's also see how the arrival delay column changed. I uh, was really expecting to see the same. And um, yeah, yeah, again, uh, we have this, uh, you know, this, this kind of bell shaped curve where the, you know, where most of our data lies within the, 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 the middle statistics of our data here. So that, uh, so we can say that most of the values lie within, let's say uh, negative five to around zero uh, minutes of, uh, of arrival delay. And uh, again, we have very few outliers as shown in our box plot below. So yeah, uh, now we have a very clean data set that we can begin doing probing some more questions. So, um, and uh, Carlotta, now that you have, uh, you know, a data set with no outliers, with no missing values, uh, what new exploited data questions do we, are we going to answer in our next section? Yeah, so good job so far. Uh, we cleaned out, uh, we cleaned our data from missing values and from outliers. Um, so now we have an upcoming data set with which we can do a much better job, right? But how we're going to use this data. Uh, we're going to do exploratory data analysis, the data analysis technique, uh, Eric, you explained us in the introductory text very well. Uh, exploratory data analysis consists in identifying a set of questions that can guide the analysis and can extract useful insights from data and try to answer them. Um, but before starting this set of questions, we would like to give you one more tip. Uh, to start your data exploration, you can leverage on the summary statistics, on the summary tools, our library, and in particular on the desk function, uh, you, you can see on the piece of code below, um, to extract the most common summary statistics for each column. Uh, and the most common summary statistics are the mean value, uh, the standard deviation, so the measure of how much the observation values to pair for the mean, the minimum value, the median value, which is the observation representing the middle of the range, very close to the mean, uh, the maximum value, the number of valid values, and the percentage of valid values. Um, great, so given this, this tip, uh, I'd like to move to uh, question eight, which is also our first question of exploratory data analysis. 
Um, so what question eight is asking us to do is using the function across and summarize, so uh, two new functions, uh, two new verbs uh, of our grammar, find the mean across the columns depth delay and R delay. Uh, so before going into the details of this question and before answering to this question, Eric, can you explain us more about summarize and the cross function? All right, Carlton, no worries. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for uh, for bringing us to this section of uh, the analysis. So yes, um, you know, as I explained what summarize across mean, um, anyone who already knows, uh, please feel free to put in the chat, you know, uh, what do you think the correct answer for this, um, for this, for this question should be. So, yeah, so, um, so let's, let's, uh, let's, let's see what summarize and across does. So, um, so what summarize does, Kalota, is, uh, is it allows you to create a, a kind of a new, a new data frame, uh, that's a function of, a, of, of the, of an existing one, um, that and, and has you know summary summary or or uh, summary statistics that you're going to calculate. So summarize so in short, the summarize verb uh, creates a new subset of uh, of, of an existing data frame with with calculations that you have done. Um, you know that use the existing data frame and 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 in this case the flight the DF flights data. So. And to do this, uh, some of, some of the calculations you want to do that um, you take from the that use you know columns and rows in the DFLIS data is um, uh, is to find the mean, and we have a function called across. So what across does is it gives you um, it's this verb that really makes your work easier when you want to to apply uh, functions to a lot of rows. So for instance, uh, this question wants us to use across. We then summarize to find the mean across departure delay and arrival delay columns. And um, you know, you'd find in real world, you want to find the mean across probably uh, 10 columns, you know, 10 columns of data. So instead of you doing manually each, um, you know, each, each, each color itself, that's what across allows you to do. So what across allows you to do is, uh, is, is uh, you know, to apply a function to, um, you know, to a wide range of, of, of columns in, in, in your data set. So Carlotta with, with uh, you know, with that said, uh, do you, uh, what, what, do you have any idea of, of how we can go ahead and you summarize an across to, uh, to find the mean across these two columns. Yeah, so um, as you just mentioned, probably uh, this is a simple use case, right? Because we want to, to uh, find the mean across only two columns, step delay and R delay, but probably uh, in a real life scenario, we would uh, have to uh, find across, uh, find the mean across multiple columns. Um, so we do have the option, I think, to just um, put over there a vector with all the list of columns we want to um, uh, to calculate the mean across, but probably a smart way of doing this could be to find a pattern in the name of the um, of the columns, if any, uh, and um, yeah, and apply the mean across all the um, all the columns that um, respond to this pattern. And in, in our in our use case, for example, we can see that both the delay and our delay column um, has the delay string in their names, right? So uh, I would leverage on that to go ahead. What do you think? Yes, that's a that, that, that's a pretty neat way of doing it. Yes, uh, you know, in case we had lots of columns that were delay uh, in them. So and that's what we're going to go ahead and and illustrate here. So. Um, so what we're going to do is that we're going to take the flights data and then we're going to create a subset uh, of that data where we want to find the mean across, you know, these columns that um, that contain. So we use a helper verb known as contain. Uh, so contains um, this string delay. So for all, so for all uh, the you know the columns that contain um, this 
this for 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 all the callouts that contains this uh, string delay, we want to find um, the mean. So let's do that right now. So contains delay, we want to find um, the mean, the 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 the, the mean across this um uh, this this column. So yes, so that's 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 how I will do it. And uh, yes, so uh, again, this uh, we have displayed the you know the the results of operation. So that took uh, the flights data, create created a, a subset table that contained uh, the mean across these two columns that had the verb or had the string delay in them. So this is a really neat way of um, and wide range of you know, of helper verbs and verbs that are contains that allows you to, you know, minimize the strain and all the typing that you had to do, um, you know, to, to achieve very simple, uh, very, very simple operation. And some of them is uh, contains. So yeah, so good job, Carlotta. That, 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 that was really a, 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 a wise idea. So, um, so again, we can, you know, run the code chunk, see whether we got it correctly. And uh, yeah, seems that we are all good, Kawata. So, uh, you know, gracefully handing you over uh, uh, for, to the next question. Um, yeah, sure. So the next question of our exploratory analysis will deal with uh, finding some, um, starting finding some relationship within our columns, right? And in particular, we will start um, in uh, exploring the relationship between uh, the, the careers, so the um, eight line companies of, of, the, of the flights of this data set uh, with the departure delay. Um, yeah, so and what, what is the best way to find the relationship between two columns? Uh, I would go with uh, plotting them, right? What do you think? Yes, 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 Carlotta. I'll also go with that. You know, um, you know, a good way of of uh, seeing what some of these hidden things in, in our data is by, um, you know, graphing some, uh, you know, putting on some graphs and seeing the relationship between uh, different different columns in the data. So um, and uh, so let's 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 compare. You know, how different carriers. Uh, uh, vary in terms of their arrival delay. So do some airlines, do they generally come in late, you know, or, or go, uh, you know, uh, let's, let, let's, let's investigate some of these questions. So let's, uh, and you do that using a box plot, but how do you do that in R? So as I mentioned earlier, we use um, a function, I mean, um, package to do plotting R is, is, is not, is, is one, uh, uh, one one package known as ggplot. So a ggplot, uh, how do you make uh, plots in ggplot? So ggplot takes in um, data frame. So we take the flies the flies data, and then we pass it on to ggplot. And then what do we do next? Um, and then we add layers, uh, you know, uh, or a, a sequentially on it. This is something that you mentioned in the decks. How Digiplot allows you to to add layers to, to to an existing canvas that you know that you can um, add more and more things that you know uh, satisfy your given uh, plotting objectives or what you want to get out of the data. So just to illustrate, um, we can cut this and run this. Um, and see what Digiplot gives is a blank canvas that um, that and then you can you know what did this blank canvas give me a box plot and 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 how do you plot a box plot use a, a layer called geom so so if you want a box plot to use geom box plot so you want a geom box plot and then we give instructions to Digiplot how do you map uh, the box plot. So you do this using uh, the mapping verb. So map the X aesthetic to carrier and the Y aesthetic to arrival delay. So uh, this is the syntax or the grammar of ggplot. So um, so you give it the data and then you give it instructions on uh, where to put various aesthetics in. So, um, 
So if we run the, you know, the um, uh, the complete the, the complete um, the the complete uh, code 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 chunk, we're able to see uh, different uh, different uh, box plot of our of our different carriers. You know, just eyeballing through, we can see that um, we can see the distribution uh, of some you know, of, of, of some carriers that some seem to have a really high distribution of arrival delay, such as the F9, such as F9 Airlines seems to really have, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the the minimum and, uh, you know, the distribution of it is significantly higher than the rest, which is, you know, a, a good starting point of asking the big question of why is this, you know, why why do you have uh, such, uh, such variation, you know, uh, compared to something like uh, YV. So, um, you know, eyeballing through this could be difficult, you know, uh, and, and prone to error. So in our next um, in our next code chunk here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to leverage on, um, on ways that you can arrange all this nicely and save you some of that uh, energy in trying to see what's the largest, what's the minimum, and, uh, uh, yeah, make your work easier. So to do that, we'll uh, you know we'll we'll investigate how the carriers now compare in terms of departure delay. So our car are some carriers having a large departure delay, small departure delay. So yeah, again we'll uh, we'll follow the procedure you know uh, above, but now we'll uh, we'll mutate. We'll use the verb mutate, which as we said earlier, either creates a new column. Or modifies an uh, an existing column uh, to suit some uh, some certain specifications. So what are we doing here? We are taking the flight data, and then we are modifying the carrier column. Started, we are reordering it. So we are reordering the the values in in the carrier in the carrier in the carrier column. Um, you know, in the default in the assigning order of. Uh, the departure delay, uh, the departure delay values. So you know this allows us to uh, you know save save us some time of eyeballing through the, the results, and then we are passing them to ggplot, and then ggplot we are adding a layer using the plus using the plus uh, the plus operator. So we are adding a layer of box plot where we want to map the x aesthetic to carrier and the y aesthetic to departure delay. And also here we add some color. We're adding the color aesthetic to carrier. So we want to, to color our box plot uh, by the different car, uh, carrier values. And then lastly, we are saying, do not show me any legend. So that's what the show.legend is equals false star. Yeah, so um, with this, we can easily see that we have, um, you know, colored one, colored our carriers with different colors uh, that, you know, help us to distinguish um, different colors, you know, from each other. Probably a better way would be to fill them ju than just to color them, you know, just fill them value, but let's just work with that here. But easily we can see that the factor reorder allows us to see that uh, the carrier that with the highest arrival departure delay is uh, the WN uh, carrier. The one that has the least uh, departure delay is 9E. So yeah, so these are some of the ways that you know, um, using ggplot, you, learning how to do one plot in ggplot to kind of extend it further, you know, as you'll see later on to other graphics and, you know, easily and intuitively uh, create, uh, you know, graphs of any kind from, from just a blank canvas that you have. So yeah, Carlotta, um, I think that's, uh, that, 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 that's, that's, that's for me until that point, do you have any questions? Are there any questions to the chat, you know? please feel free to, uh, to interrupt. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to comment uh, over there because, um, I mean, it's very interesting how we can here the, see, like compare the different airlines in terms of delays. And I wish I, I would have some, some, some uh, such, that, such data for the line companies uh, before choosing uh, like the, the flight I want to fly with, right? Um, so uh, apart from that, we 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 do have uh, a good question from the chat. So I would like to um, um, just maybe um, have a little um, 
going back a little bit to answer to Calvin. So uh, Calvin is asking, uh, so on the function across, can I use it on columns uh, with different names, like on delay and another column at the same time? Um, uh, yeah, Eric, do you want to pick, to pick it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, perfect. Um, yes. Oh, on, on the uh, oh, oh, for the function across, right? Yeah. For, yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, if we can use it for for columns with different names. Yeah. Exactly. Ah. Yes. Yes. Um. Yeah. I. Yes. That is. That is. That is. Uh, that is really possible. You know. Uh. We can. We, we, we can apply the the the, the, the uh, we can apply you know um, a given a given function to any column that satisfies uh, some given conditions. So if uh, for instance we wanted to, um, to 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 do the the mean of, of a column that contains another you know another another an, another string, we can easily do that. Yes, yeah, so that's possible. It's possible to do that. Yeah, and just to add on that, um, also if there are there are no patterns like in common between the columns we want to do the the, the mean across, we 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 can simply um, just list uh, the, the columns we want to do the mean across by by building a vector with all the list of columns we want to uh, compute the mean. So um, all of these is perfectly doable. Yeah. Uh, so. Carlotta, are we allowed to, to, to illustrate to an example or uh, is is uh, is there, yeah is, of course oh perfect perfect yeah so um yeah so just for 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 Calvin's sake we can we can try and um you know do some of the stuff that Carlotta has, has suggested you know we can um you know for let's say for uh for for columns that that don't have matching values you know we can we can you can list them in a vector you know such as uh trying to see what what columns you could use um yeah we could use for example carrier and that delay maybe they don't have any string in common yeah yeah so let's uh let's put probably a rival delay and um and and here right month here month here just bad example but yeah let's uh uh so across concatenate the month year and uh the um you know the the column so want to uh find the mean across uh these two columns we put them in a vector so year and uh, month and let's see how this would uh will draw out yeah so it's um it's it's uh as easy as as that we can yes we, we can we, we can be able to use across for multiple you know for multiple uh for multiple columns that do not uh have the same uh less string or something yeah i hope that is answered correctly perfect um so kevin let us know if you have any other doubts on that um so now i would like to go back uh, to our exploratory data analysis. Um, so, uh, yeah, the next question we want to answer uh, for our exploratory data analysis um, is uh, to explore the relationship between the days of the week and the arrival delay. Um, so, we want to answer the question if um, some days of the week are more prone to arrival delays than others. So, before we, uh, we were trying to analyze uh, with which airline companies it would be best to travel. And I want to understand in which days it would be best to travel, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really interesting question, you know. Um, yeah, I'm also curious to see what's the result of this. Yeah, um, but yeah, before we do that, um, I'm really taking back something important Carlotta say, that the days of the week were encoded as numbers. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But um, in reality, we want to encode this as categorical variables because that distinguish that day one is different from day two or from day three. And how do we do that? So um, in R, we encode um, we encode 
things as far as as categorical as categorical using the factor function so the factor uh so in r a factor is a categorical variable you know uh such as uh male female diabetic or not diabetic so here it's day of the way so that's what we'll start with we'll, we'll use the mutate verb to um modify the day of the week to a factor and then we use uh ggplot uh just as we are uh, explained earlier for we map the x aesthetic to day of the week and y aesthetic to arrival delay so um yes yeah, so let's see about that um all right so seems uh day six i'm guessing this saturday um has the lowest uh arrival delay so okay good good day to travel i would say uh, what do you think a lot yeah 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 my nice nice surprise i mean <laughs> yeah yes yes uh shocking why day three for uh this seems to be really busy days for this airport so yeah so this good good findings you know uh, so do we increase you know will we increase our uh, uh support you know, staff support on these days or you know what's happening these days do you have very much traffic so this these are the, these are the iterative questions that that, that can that that a, a good graph or good you know exploit data analysis can can give rise to so now that we have explored for arrival delay we are yeah now it's over to you anyone who's running the code chunk or in the chat would want to answer uh let's uh um let, let, let us allow Kalida to take us through uh this 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 question nine and uh see how it relates to the other one yeah perfect so um uh, the next question as you just mentioned is very similar to the previous one uh this time we want to discover whether there is any relationship between the days of the week and the departure delays so if some days of the week are more prone to departure delay, delays than others right um, yeah, so let's uh, let's plot again a beautiful graph, maybe more colorful than the uh, than the last one. <laughs> good, 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 yeah, good, um, good, good, good call there. Good call there. Yes. So um, let's let's again, um, uh, as you said earlier, the day of the week is encoded as a numeric variable, but we want it to be a categorical variable. So, and we do that using, we modify that particular column using um, a mutate verb. So I want to modify the uh, day of, day of week, um, day of week into a categorical variable using the, you know, the, the function factor. So factor day of week, yes. So, that should be correct, yes. So once you've encoded, uh, you know, once you've mutated or modified the column during the week into a factor, um, and, uh, you know, store that as as a um, variable named dear flights, uh, we want to make a plot uh, where we take the flights data, pass it on to ggplot, and then add a layer of box plot. And then here I want to map some, you know, some aesthetics. So once the X axis, uh on the day of the week so we want the x-axis on the day of the week uh and the y-axis uh on the departure delay so um so these are the means that a flight was delayed so that's a departure delay then you want to color it as uh, the day of the week but um let's let's here use another aesthetic known as feel so feel will, you know, instead of coloring it, will uh, will literally fill it with that value of color, uh, which which will be obtained from um, you know from some color palettes known as dark to in 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 R. This comported in uh, in ggplot. So um, yeah, so you can see feel is very different from color. So feel at least uh, you know fills the the value the. The, the given box plot with, with, with different colors. So uh, again, we can um, we can see that uh, this is, you know, um, the most uh, most most days have um, a very similar distribution. Except uh, let's say day four and day five, which seems to have a 
you know, considerably uh, lower distribution of de departure delay days than the rest, but generally they they all look very um, very very similar. I'll say in my opinion. So, but yeah, this will be different probably for another for another data set. But yeah, for now, um, uh, you know, what will be of interest will be uh, probably more interest will be for the arrival delay. But this seem uh, pretty similar. So again, uh, that's how we you know we use Digiplot um, and, and and various aesthetics in it to tell the story of our data better or to you know analyze and and look for insights better. And uh, again, we can uh, we can use the code chunk to check whether our answer is correct uh, or not correct. But yes, um, that's it on, uh, on on checking which day of the week is more prone to arrival or departure delays. So, Kalota, over over to you. Um, what what would we do next now? Yeah. So wonderful. We we just explored. Uh, which days of the week are more prone to delays, right? So our uh, next step of our exploration will be um, which airport is more prone to delay, right? So which airport has the highest average departure delay? Um, yeah, and, and this time we are not going to... Um, uh, we are not going to plot, um, to plot the graph, right? Because we want to... Um, to get the, the um, to, to get the top uh, airport with the highest average, um, yeah. So, do you mind go through the the answer to this new question? Yeah, yes, Kalate, you are perfectly right. Yes, yeah, so um, so so in this in this new question again, we want to see you know which which departure airports have the highest average delays. You know, um, this would be a you know really interesting question. You know, you know which 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 airports have uh, uh, are 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 lagging, and you know why you know why are flights from this airport having uh, departure or arrival delays. So um, we we'll use two new verbs. You no know, one verb group by, which is usually mostly used with conjunction with summarize. So what group by allows you to do. Group by allows you to um, uh, group by allows uh, uh, or allows you to to do the subsequent operations, you know, based on uh, the individual values of a particular column. So, for instance, we want to group by origin airport name, and then for each airport, we want to find uh, the mean. We want to create a new a new data frame using summarize, which has the mean of each uh, origin airport um which has the mean departure delay of each uh origin airport so that's what group by allows you to do you know like um take uh sets that the the, the next subsequent operations are performed uh for each you know for each unique for each unique uh value in a particular in another in another column so let's run through the code we take the flight data then we group by the origin airport name and so for each airport name, we want to find, so for each airport name, we create, we create um, you know, a, a subset of, uh, you know, a, a table using summarize that has the mean departure delay of that airport. And then we use the verb called arrange to uh, arrange the, the mean departure delay times in descending order. And then again, use the slice head uh, verb, which you're already familiar with from the start, to view the first seven rows of the data. So um, yes, and these are uh, the airports with the mean uh, and, and the corresponding mean departure delay time. So uh, the mean delay time of around two minutes, so not, not, not as much, and that's the maximum. So um, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, uh, that, 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 that could be of, uh, of interest, you know, seeing, uh, the, the, the origin airport name uh, really does not have a really big influence on uh, on, on the mean departure delay time. So again, um, we can we, we, we can use you know this uh, data transformation in conjunction with uh, you know in conjunction with a plot and, uh, and 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 see this visually you know but see this visually. So um, so what what do we do here? We take what the the data frame that we 
produced earlier, known as the mean departure delays. And then we again use the function or the verb mutate to reorder the origin airport name according to um, a descending order of mean departure delay time. So using the, 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 the verb factor reorder. So again, factor reorder reorders the, um, you know, the, the individual uh, column values uh, in, in a particular order. We pass it on to ggplot. And this time we are using a new type of plot. We are using a bar plot. And in bar plot in R, we can use it, um, we can plot it easily using the geom call, um, geom, call a va geom call function. So instead of geom bar plot like the rest, we're using a geom call. So uh, that's a bar plot. And I'm saying the X aesthetic map it, map it to origin airport name. The Y aesthetic match it to the mean departure delay time. Fill the bar plots with a, a value with this color known as midnight blue. Set the opacity to around 0 0.7. Uh, and then rotate the X axis uh, to an angle of 90. So um, yeah, so this, this represents the various ways that you can, you know, take a simple, take a simple, um, you know, take a simple plot and extend it further with colors, rotate the axis, um, yeah, and, and so on and so forth. So, but by graphing, we can really see that uh, in terms of mean departure delay time, we have a lot, we have lots of, uh, you know, airport with negative values that uh, meaning uh, that the flights are not actually uh, delayed. So, and this is way more than um, th than the ones that were delayed. So this, you know, this the power of data visualization combined with uh, data transformation. So you know, because we started with the raw data, we found the mean departure delays, passed that data to a plot, and uh, so visually uh, that you know most of the airports have uh, have negative uh, uh, departure delay time. It's a good thing. So you can also try, you know, in the meantime, guess why Chicago Airport has the most Departure delay of why Long Beach has the least. So that's uh, uh, that's something for you to do uh, in, your, in your spare time. But uh, for now, we will um, continue on with the next question. Carlota, if there is uh, no question from our audience or from you. Uh, yeah, no, we don't have other questions from the chat so far. Um, yeah, so I would move to the to the next question of our exploratory analysis, which is also question ten of our uh, of our hands on workshop today. Um, so, uh, question ten uh, is asking us an interesting uh, an interesting to do an interesting analysis because we we would like to check if we can confirm from data. Uh, the hypothesis that late departures tend to result in longer arrival delays. Um, so, yeah, it's a quite logical hypothesis to do, right? But uh, le let's let's see if uh, if data can confirm that or not. Uh, and to do so, we will leverage again on box plot. Uh, so, graphing late departure or uh, late departures on x axis and arrival delays on y axis. Um, so, Eric, let's go ahead and fill in this piece of code with the right answer, right? Yeah, yes, yes, Carlotta. And, uh, you know, you've put it so well there, um, uh, how, 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 how we can have our policies in mind, but, you know, we want to confirm from the data, you know, is, is this correct, you know? Like, for instance, do, do uh, uh, late departures result in longer arrival delays? You know, that's... So you have that hypothesis and then use uh, data transformation and data visualization to, to uh, answer that. So the first data transformation we do, so we take the flight's data and then we modify the departure delay 15 uh, column into a factor. So, and the factors are categorical. So either one or zero, if you remember the departure delay 15 uh, column was either one or zero binary indicator. So yes, yeah, so once we have done that uh, data transformation, let's uh, let's let's um, you know time to see it uh, visually. So we take the flight data and then we pass it on to ggplot and then we add a layer of a box plot uh, where we're mapping the x aesthetic to um, so we are mapping the x aesthetic to. Let's, let's take a moment here, Carlotta. What are we doing? We are trying to see whether late departures 
tend to result in longer arrival delays. So that X aesthetic uh, is uh, the departure delay, um, 15, co 15 column. 15, yeah. yeah, and the Y uh, aesthetic is, uh, you know, um, the uh, longer arrival delay. So the Y, the y aesthetic is the, the um, uh, longer arrival delay. So arrival, uh, delay arrival delay that was it yep arrival delay is perfect so yeah so we take the x aesthetic which is uh departure delay for the uh a color one or zero and the corresponding y aesthetic is the distribution of the arrival delay and then we want to fill it using uh you know the different colors depending on whether a flight was uh delayed or not and um we can see this uh graphically what does this tell us um uh, yeah i think no. it's there's a typo in our delay uh it's not right our delays but our delay so there's oh. an extra s over there yeah so object arrival delay is not found that's a good observation quality yes so typo there it's our delay so um all right, so let's correct that and run that again. And yes, um, we get this um, this two box plots, you know, for whether a flight was delayed. Uh, so zero means a flight was delayed, was not delayed. One means a flight was uh, delayed, and the corresponding distribution of the um, of the arrival delay. So, um, Carlotta, does this surprise you? Does this surprise you? No, not really, because uh, it's just confirming what uh, our um, our logic logic uh, logical hypothesis, right? So for um, for for flights that were that had um, a, de um, a late a delay in the departure, we also have a, a greater um, delay in arrival. So yeah, our hypothesis was confirmed. Great. Perfect, perfect color tag. Yes, exactly. So we can run our, yeah, uh, we can check your answer um, to run uh, by, by running the code chunk. And uh, yes, uh, again, uh, yeah, we can see de delayed departures have high median values for the arrival delay. So indeed, late departures tend to result in longer arrival delay time. So perfect. Uh, I guess we are wrapping up. Uh, so what, so our final adventure, it's leading us to uh, defining what routes, you know, from this airport to this airport, you know, um, you know, what, what, what's, what's the distribution of, of, of late arrivals or early arrivals. So, um, so to do this, we'll use now mutate to create a new column. You know, we're using it to modify an existing column. Now we use it to create a new column entirely known as root. So we take the flight data and then use mutate to create a new column known as root. So um, the root column, uh, we use uh, paste, uh, the paste, paste um, command. So what paste allows you to do, it allows you to combine two strings together. So if you remember origin airport name and destination airport name, those are strings. So paste allows you to bring those two, two strings together and uh, also provides you a separator what do you want to separate them with? You want to separate them using this, uh, you know, sign here greater than. So this just meaning origin airport to destination airport. So uh, that's how we use mutate to create a new column entirely. So uh, again, we can um, can see this uh, once we run it. Um, we can see that we created a new column known as root that that uh, you know concatenates the strings of origin airport to uh, the destination airport. So once you have this, um, once you have this column, uh, I mean, once you have the, the column, we can, we can again use group by and summarize and arrange to find the route to the most uh, late arrivals. So um, how do we do this? So these are typical data transformation uh, which probably are now already familiar with. So we take the flights data and then we group by the route. So for each route, 
um, we want to calculate the sum of the uh, of the instances that a flight was uh, was was arrived, you know, arrival delayed by more than fifteen minutes by finding the sum of arrival delay, and then we want to arrange in descending order of um, uh, of that sum. So group by again uh, allows you to uh, you know to perform operations, you know, group by uh, per the you know per the uh, distinct variable in in the roots um, in in the roots uh, uh, column. So that is each for each root, we found uh, you know the sum of the number of times that our flight was uh, was delayed by more than fifteen minutes, and then we used the verb arrange to you know arrange um, arrange that you know in terms of descending order. So we can find that a route such as San Francisco had um nine had a count of 90 times that you know a, a, a flight was delayed by more than 15 minutes so that's uh that's a lot you know um but you know uh considerably you have uh, routes that do not have any uh arrival uh delays by more than 15 minutes so uh yeah it's a uh, pretty interesting why one have more than 90 and uh, another one uh, zero. So, but yeah, that's, you know, that warrants further, further research, you know, probing further. So Carlotta, now over to our final question. What are we doing? Yeah, so um, let's move to our final question, question 11 of, of this challenge. So um, uh, let's perform a similar analysis, right, on average arrival delay time this, ta this time. So we want to explore the relationship between uh, the route, with the, the new column we just defined, and the highest average arrival delay time. Um, so again, we will use some verb we, we just used, like group by, like summarize and range. Um, yeah, so um, I, I think it's time to answer our last question, right? Yes, 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 Carlotta. Um, uh, yeah, so, you know, for, for all time's sake, we'll, do, we'll do be willing to, uh, uh, to, to, for us to do this together, right? You know, so we start the flight data and then we, what do you want to do next? You want to, um, you know, group by the uh, the arrival delay, right? So we, um, what we do, we we use the verb group by. So um, we want to group by the arrival delay. So for no, we want to group by the road. Sorry, we want to group by the road. So for each road. Uh, want to find the mean arrival delay. So these are the number of minutes that our, our flight was uh, was delayed. So we start with the flight data, and then we uh, want to investigate, um, you know, which 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 route has the highest um, arrival delay in terms of minutes. So flight data we group by the route, and then for each route, uh, we want to find the uh, arrival delay, uh, the mean. Um, arrival delay minutes and then uh, so we put that into our table using summarize so summarize as you say earlier creates a new data frame um uh, you know that's a function of the existing data so we summarize so uh create a new data frame that has the main arrival delays for each route and then we lastly want to arrange all this uh in descending order of um arrival delay. So uh, yeah, obviously uh, all this was in the question, you know, starting the flight data, group the observations by the route, and then create a summary table with a column name arrival delay, which is the mean arrival delay, and then array this in descending order. So um, yeah, so once we run that, we can, yes, we can get, um, you know, the, the first five uh, variables, um, you know, that uh, that that had, you know, the, the, the mean, that, that had the mean arrival minutes uh, of that particular airport. So, I mean, of that particular route. So that means, uh, so Louis Armstrong International to Ronald Reagan 
had a mean arrival delay of about 24 minutes. So uh, again, this we can probe this further by, by let's say probably arranging in descend, in ascending order this time, you know, graphing the results. But yeah, um, we'll uh, we'll leave it here by checking our answer and uh, yeah, uh, finishing off on the last question. And yeah, again, uh, yes, we've successfully grouped by and summarized the observation in descending order, use the mean, um, um, you know, and, 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 you know, gathered insights that, you know, uh, of, of what truths tend to have uh, higher mean arrival delays and, and, and all that. But yeah, really, um, if, if, you know, if you're going to do this uh, at home or with friends, you know, or alone, um, yes, the questions really guide you on what to do really well uh, put and uh, uh, with, with all the verbs that you used before or coming down uh, full circle uh, in, in, the pre in, in the subsequent question to be really easy for you to, um, you know, for, for you to replicate the, the results that you've gotten here. So Alata, um, over to you now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say congratulations on finishing this challenge. Um, and I would like just to wrap up the session, right? So um, uh, we've gone through uh, our goals, our learning objectives for this session. Um, and our main objectives were um, um, presenting common data exploration and analysis tasks, uh, presenting how to use our packages like ggplot 2 and EPR to turn raw data into understanding, insight and knowledge, and examine real world data. And we, and we explored the um, U.S. transportation uh, data set, uh, flight data sets, right? So uh, it was a very nice challenge. Thanks, Eric. And thanks, everyone, for joining the, the, this session. Uh, I would also like to remember that you can find all the content of this session in the, uh, in the GitHub repository. Um, in the, you, you will find the link in the chat. Uh, the, the workshop library, and you can also practice again with this not, notebook on your own at your own piece, um, leveraging on the OTTR package um, and a set of tests we have written for you in order to check your answers. So as, you, as we just um, showed to you, you can auto-grade yourself. Uh, also remember that this is only the first episode of a series of four episodes dedicated to getting started with R for the Science. Today we, um, we we dealt with data exploration and analysis, but in the next episode we will deal with uh, regression models uh, using tidy models. Then we will also in the next two episodes we, we will also talk about classification and, and clustering. So stay tuned and um, put on your calendar uh, the, the the next episodes. So um, I, I, don't, I don't see any questions from, from the chat and I hope this is a good, uh, a good uh, sign. I mean, probably it was clear enough. I hope so. Uh, so thank you very much, Eric. And thanks for everyone uh, who joined uh, the session today. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.